أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم <تصفيق> الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا ونبينا أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد وعلى أهل بيته الأطيبين الأنجبين بهم نتولى ومن أعدائهم نتبرأ إلى الله اللهم كن لوليك الحجة ابن الحسن صلواتك عليه وعلى آبائه في هذه الساعة وفي كل ساعة وليا وحافظا وقاعدا وناصرا وذليلا وعينا حتى تسكنه أرضك توغا وتمتعه فيها طويلا اللهم صل على محمد وعلى محمد وعجل فرجه It is the Ziyarat Ali Yaseen, as it was mentioned in the previous session. It is the Ziyarat advised by Imam Mahdi alayhi salatu wasalam to address him. And we do find these statements from Ma'asumeen where they have instructed you to approach them, to address them and how you, the adab you need to observe. Like, for example, there is another ziyarat, Jami'at al-Kabira, which is, in fact, a complete lesson of imamat, and that has been reported to us by Imam Hadi, alayhi salatu wasalam. So it has been a practice where imams, they educate, they teach, uh, as how we approach them. Like they have uh, addressed and they have taught us how we address the Almighty Allah, and how we speak to him, how we communicate to him in the different forms of du'as that we have. So all of these du'as from the A'imma alayhim salam they are a channel, a way, an etiquette, an akhlaq, a manner. They have taught us how we approach the Almighty Allah and how we present our needs, our hajat before him. So here also it's the same. It is from Imam al-Asr alayhi salatu wasalam where he says that إِذَا أَرَدْتُمْ أَتَّوَجُّهْ بِنَا إِلَى اللَّهِ تَعَالَى وَإِلَيْنَا فَتَقُولُ كَمَا قَالَ اللَّهِ تَعَالَى If you intend to seek the Almighty Allah or if you intend to seek the Almighty via and through us that is us over here it is Imam alayhi salatu wasalam so he says that now in, in most of these ziyarat and riwayat, ma'asumin, they address themselves as us, not us. In, you do find statements where the singular also has been used, but generally us has been used a lot. Us meaning, us meaning one, uh, me, the imam, alayhi salam. So if you intend to approach the Almighty Allah via the Imam alayhi salam, so you address the Imam as such, Salamun ala al Yaseen. And it was mentioned in the previous session that al Yaseen are the descendants of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. As it says in Quran, Yaseen wal Quran al Hakim. Innaka lamin al Mursaleen that Yaseen is the name of Rasulullah wal Quran al Hakim by the glorious Quran by the wise Quran. Innaka lamin al Mursaleen indeed you are among the messengers. So here when I say Salamun ala al Yaseen, Salam be upon you, the descendant of or the progeny of Yaseen, that is progeny of Rasulullah, that is Imam al-Asr alayhi salatu was salam. Now the next phrase over here, it is, As-salamu alayka ya da'i Allah wa rabbaniya ayatih. Da'i is the one who summons you, who invites you. Da'i, it's from da'wat, that is, salam be upon you who invites you, who calls you, who summons you. Ilallah, uh, the, the caller of the Almighty Allah, wa rabbani ya ayatih, rabbani ya ayatih, someone who is aware of his ayat, his signs. We'll come to both of these sentences in this uh, session today, inshallah. So, assalamu alayka. Ya da'i Allah wa rabbani ya ayate. Invitation to God means someone 
uh, to enter the religion of Allah wa ta'ala, and to be obedient to Him. So such an invitation then it, uh, to enter Islam or to enter to the obedience of Allah wa ta'ala. So it, it does, mean, does it mean that anyone can invite or it is a special assignment, a divine assignment that the inv invitation to call to Allah, to summon to Allah has been given to a designated person. So over here, the question is, who gives the right to invite to uh, invite the people to God? Is it anyone who can start the mission by himself? Or no, there has to be a special invite. Now over here in this ziyarat, we say, Assalamu alaikum ya da' ya Allah. Salam be upon you, the summoner or the caller to Allah. So some say that this is a natural right that all human beings they have and in support uh, of their opinion uh, they present these verses from Quran and then they say that anyone can be the caller and the summoner to Allah. Now the ayat they bring from Quran they say that man ahsanu qawlan mimman da'a ila Allahi wa amila salihan wa qala innani min al-muslimin who is better call than him who summons to Allah and acts righteously and says indeed I am one of the Muslims now this is the ayah from surah Fussilat ayah number 33 where they have taken that as a um, as a an evidence and they say that anyone can call and to and summon to Allah ta'ala now but this statement is not true for the people praised in the verse is uh, the one who has the right to be invited therefore this verse it does not imply in any way that it, this right can be delegated to another person so this ayah over here proves that the one who summons and who calls to Allah it's someone who has been designated, has been appointed by Allah to invite you to his religion, invite you to his command, invite you to his Islam. Now, when you look into Quran also, there are other ayat. For example, one of them states that, Ya ayyuhan nabi, inna arsalnaka shahidan wa mubashiran wa nadira. وَدَاعِيًا إِلَى اللَّهِ بِإِذْنِهِ وَسِرَاجًا مُنِيرًا Allah says that, O oh, you, the Prophet, that, Ya أَيُّهَا nabi, O oh, Messenger. Now this is the adab that Allah uses all the way through in Quran, that He addresses the Prophet by His title. Says, Ya أَيُّهَا nabi, O oh, Messenger, O oh, Prophet, إِنَّا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ We have sent you shahidan as a witness, Mubashiran as a bearer of good news, Wanazira and someone who warns, Wadayan ilallahi bi and as a summoner to Allah by his permission, and wasirajam munira. So we've sent you as a radiant light. So over here it's clearly understood that this designation is divine, appointment is from Allah. So the caller who will invite you towards this message is from Allah's direct appointment. So he clearly states that the invitation to God the Almighty is one of the ranks and positions of the mission of prophethood and it is necessary that this invitation be with the intent, the irada and the permission of the Almighty Allah. Therefore invitation is like uh, intercession like the shafa'at that we have so shafa'at also it isn't as such that anyone can be uh, a shafi can intercede no quran says in surah in al-baqarah in ayatul kursi man zalladhi yashfa'u indahu illa bi who can intercede before god illa bi but by his command so the command to intercede also has been given by the Almighty Allah. Now, when you look into these ayat that were explained until now, these three, four ayat, that clearly say that, As-salamu alayka, ya da'i Allah, 
Salam be upon you, the summoner and the caller to Allah is a ma'asum, is the prophet, is someone who has been appointed by Allah. Now on the contrary towards, to, to what was mentioned so far, we have this opinion that is, uh, let's say that people think that calling to Islam does not require any religious permission because this is not only the right of Muslims, but it's an, it is uh, obligatory upon them. They say that, now the, this, the group says that the, uh, the argument is, verses like uh, an aqeem an deen in Quran that say that you have to establish deen. Or there are other ayat that say that wa aqeemu salat, you have to establish salat. So these ayat that you have to establish deen, to establish salat. So therefore every Muslim who is in charge of promoting the religion has the right to rule over the ummah and it is obligatory on the ummah to pledge allegiance to him and obey and he has to be obeyed. Now with this, with this <coughs> mindset or with this ideology or with this thought, the Khilafat of Abu Bakr and Abu Bakr and Umar and also subsequently the Khulafa of the uh, Ottoman Empire, the Ottoman rule, the Osmani and all the Islamic movements that took place in Egypt, in Jordan and all these Khilafats that came into existence, uh, they say that just like the two ayat we have in Quran that you establish prayers, you establish deen, so over here also so whoever establishes uh, a rule then it becomes binding and wajib on you that you swear an allegiance uh, to him and obey, obeying him it becomes mandatory and wajib. So this is the ruling they have and based upon that the Tahrir party uh, in Egypt they also came into existence on Muhammad bin Abdul Wahhab he comes into uh, existence and takes the allegiance from everyone and says that I am uh, it is wajib on you that you be obedient to me because I am in power and uh, th th that is how the whole uh, uh, ideology they have. Now, this is contradicts with the teachings of Quran. Quran doesn't say that. Quran says that uh, this power, this ability, this might or this rank, it is a designated rank that Allah Taala He gives to those who He wishes, who He desires and who He pleases. And it is the intent of the Almighty Allah. So when you say that, Assalamu alaika, ya da'i Allah, da'iya means someone who calls to Allah. And who is he? The Prophet, not anyone else. So if it is the Prophet who summons you, or someone who is in line with the teachings of the Prophet, or takes the command from Rasulullah, or takes the charge from the Imam Ma'asum, or Ma'asum has appointed him, then that designation also becomes a lawful and legal designation. So if you take this word that the uh, the other school of thought say, takes, so it means that, uh, that uh, it would not issue itself, uh, but there's going to be always a struggle between the domination and government. So whoever is dominant has to rule according to them. And they have got that rule as well, Al-Hukmu Ma'aman Ghalab. That is, the rule is with whosoever who dominates, who takes it over. The rule is his. And now according to the ayat that were recited, and won't be a call for a lot of leadership, and there's going to be a lot of conflict, even in one country, city, home, etc. So over here, uh, no one has the right to be invited to God, except with Allah's permission, and except that he... Uh, he invites and he summons and he gives that charge to that person. So I hope I was able to explain this uh, a little bit. Now, now when you look into uh, the ayat of Quran, uh, for example, uh, there are ayat that say, "Wallahu yadu ila dar salam, wa yahdi man yasha'u ila siratim mustaqim." That is Allah. He invites you to the abode of peace, Dar es Salaam, and He guides whomever He wishes to a straight path. So guidance is His. 
he appoints someone and then that appointment or the person who he has appointed takes the charge to guide the people to the right path. Or for example, there are other ayat in Quran and in, in, in the second stage says, Ud'u ila sabili rabbika bil hikmati wal mawghidatil hasana wajadilhum billati hiya ahsan. So the phrase that we are talking about is the first phrase of this ziyarah. As-salamu alayka, ya da'i Allah. Salam be upon you, O Imam, the summoner, the caller to Allah. And this ayah says, Ud'u ila sabili rabbika. You invite to the way of Allah, tabaraka wa ta'ala, with wisdom and with good advice. And then you dispute with them in a manner that is best. Wajadilhum billati hiya ahsan. So who can invite? Someone who has got the knowledge to invite. Someone who has been appointed to invite. Someone who can be kind in his invitation. Someone who is just. And then someone who wants to install justice. And then, وَجَادِلْهُمْ بِالَّتِي هِيَ أَحْسَنُ And even if there is a dispute, you would see they, it is the Imams and no one else. With all that patience and with all that sabr, they... Um, and even if there is a dispute, they treat them in the best manner. جَادِلْهُمْ بِالَّتِي هِيَ أَحْسَنُ And dispute with them in a manner that is best. Now, when you look into Qur'an again, the, uh, the summoner or the caller is Rasulullah. Quran says, وَإِنَّكَ لَتَهْدِي إِلَىٰ صِرَاطٍ مُسْتَقِيمٍ Now in this ayah, now those of you who are familiar with the Arabic language, here you see there is so much of emphasis. تَأْكِيد وَإِنَّكَ And indeed you are. لَا تَهْدِي لَا تَهْدِي Also this lam that we have before tahdi is a further emphasis. Indeed, you will definitely guide ila sirat mustaqim to the uh, straight path to the sirat mustaqim. Or elsewhere, in says that in hadha al Quran yahdi lillati hiya aqwam. Indeed, it is this Quran that guides to what is most upright. So, guidance is Allah's. Guidance is given to Rasulullah. And Rasulullah also forwards and gives that guidance to us. And after Rasulullah, it is the infallible, the ma'asumin who have been appointed by the Almighty Allah, chosen by him for this designated task. Now in Quran, then in this book, he mentions those who have been allowed to be invited after God and his messenger and says, Well, takun minkum ummatun yad'una ila al-khayr says that there has to be a nation among you summoning to the good. Yeah, that is, يَدْعُونَ إِلَى الْخَيْرِ وَيَأْمُرُونَ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ وَيَنْهَوْنَا عَنِ الْمُنْكَرِ Bidding what is right, forbidding what is wrong. وَأُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الْمُفْلِحُونَ And indeed, they are those who are prosperous. So over here also clearly mentions that they are after the Prophet or those who have learned from the Prophet, they can take the charge of guidance, but the ultimate guidance is Rasulullah, is from the infallible, alayhim salam Then God informs about this ummah and what group they belong to. They are the descendants of Ibrahim, of Ismail, and who were the inhabitants of the sacred house that is the Masjid al-Haram, of those and who never worshipped anyone apart from the Almighty God and who made the invitation also wajib on them. And the same invitation of Ibrahim and Ismail, the inhabitants of the divine Masjid al-Haram, is in this book that has been mentioned. So we see that this infallibility in guidance is there present all the way through. So if anyone comes up and takes the charge and says that it is my rule and obedience upon you is wajib, being obedient to me, so that doesn't, um, uh, it is there's no validity to that because it all contradicts with this concept of ismat that we have in the ayat of Quran. Now, Quran has another ayah says, "Uzina lilladina yuqatiluna bi annahum zulimu, wa inna Allah ala nasrihim la qadir." That is those who fight against the permitted uh, to fight because they have been wronged. So if the 
and Allah indeed He helps them. And who are they? Alladina ukhriju min diyarihim. That is, they were expelled from their homes. Bighayri haqqin, unjustly. Illa an yaqulu Rabbun Allah. And because they said that Rabbun Allah, Allah is our Lord, they were expelled from their homes. Now over here in such a situation, when, you, when they have been ousted, over here defending your rights, you can stand and you can uh, fight back for your rights. Otherwise, the rule is, that is, it is the command of the Almighty Allah, the Samana is the Almighty Allah, and that Shifaat also is by the Almighty, Bi'iznillah, by the command of Allah, and he gives this guidance to his chosen, to his infallible. Now, when you look into the uh, wasiyat of Amir al-Mu'mineen, Salamullah alayhi, to Kumail ibn Ziyad, Imam says, now this is being uh, reported from Tuhaf al-Uqul, Imam says that, Kumail, in your opinion, if God, the Almighty, did not send any prophet and there was only one pious believer on earth, would he make a mistake in inviting God or would he uh, do the right, do it right? Uh, then Imam says, I swear to God that he was wrong and unless that, that even the person, he may be pious, but he, he, will, he was wrong. Unless Allah appoints him for that task. If Allah appoints him for that task and gives him the ability to do it, then he will be right. Without an appointment, no matter, no matter what is done, it, it's not going to be correct, it's not going to be right. So, da'wat or this invitation or summoning to Allah, tabarak wa ta'ala, that is the task of the infallible, task of the prophets, tasks of the imam. And here, when we say that as in dua, sorry, in ziyarat jami'atil kabira, there the term is as ala al-a'immatil duat, that is salam be upon the imams. Now ziyarat jami'atil kabira, you can recite for any one of the imams, you intend to... Uh, pay a visit to Imam al-Jawad or you want to address Imam al-Jawad for example you can recite that ziyarat jami'at and kabira for him so in that ziyarah you say as-salamu ala al-a'immat al-du'a that salam be upon the imams who are they? al-du'at du'at it's the plural of da'i the summoners the callers wal-qadat al-hudat now wal-qadat Qada, it's the leader. al hudat the guides. So clearly, the interpretation of this first sentence of Ziyarat Ali Yaseen can be seen in Ziyarat Jami'at al-Kabira. The statements and the sayings, the riwayat of Ma'sumin alayhim salam, they are like the ayat of Qur'an. Like some of the ayat of Qur'an, they interpret the other ayat of Qur'an Statements of Ma'asumin also, they are similar. They are because Noor and Wahid, they are all one Noor, and that statement can be seen. See here, here, it says, As-salamu ala al-a'immat al-du'at wal-qadat al-hudat, that salam be upon you, the imams, the, guy, the, the summoners, the callers, al-qadat al-hudat, that is, the, the, the leaders and the guides. Or, for example, Ya qawmana, Ajibu da'i Allah. In another ayah of Quran, uh, the Almighty says that, Ya qawmana, O our people, Ajibu da'i Allah. Respond to Allah's samana. Wa man la yujib da'i Allah, falaysa bi mu'jizin fil ard. And if someone does not respond to the uh, samana, fa uh, woman, lam you, and he who does not respond to the Almighty, that is, to the the summoner, the caller, the prophet, uh, cannot frustrate Allah on the earth, and they will not find any protectors beside him. They are in manifest error. So, whosoever does not accept the summoner, the caller, the da'i il Allah, is in great error. So here, clearly, in all of these statements and ayat so far, we find that Allah, tabarak wa ta'ala, He has appointed the prophets as the da'i, as the summoners and callers, 
And Amirul Mu'mineen Salamullah Alayhi also over here in all of these uh, statements so far and also says that if a prophet he appoints a, a wasi for him and then a naib for him, a representative for him, then that uh, chain of guidance will continue through the, uh, through the, um, th through the representation. So, da'ya Allah yujibuna da'ya Allah wa yad'una ila Allah. So here, the meaning of da'ya Allah, it is, the, it is, that is, whosoever responds to the call of Allah, tabarak wa ta'ala, wa yad'una ila Allah. So the Samana, for example, here Imam al-Zaman alayhi salam, he has responded to the call of Allah in summoning us and we too have embraced, have submitted to the call of Imam al-Asr alayhi salatu wa salam. So da'i Allah, that is the mission. Now, Imam al-Asr alayhi salatu wa salam, from the time of the shahadat of his father, that is, even though he was a child in that childhood, five years of age, he was the manager or he was the whole soul authority, manager of all of the affairs of the uh, Almighty Allah from that young age. Now, that is the aqidah that we have, that Imam, no matter what age he be, that task is divine given to him and ilm is given to him, which is knowledge. Infallibility is a must condition and also appointment from the Almighty Allah. Now in Quran, there is this ayah nur. Ayah nur, it is one of those beautiful ayat. Ayah number 35 from Surah An Nur. Allah says, Allahu nur as samawati wal ard. Allah is the light of the skies and the earth. مَثَلُ نُورِهِ كَمِشْكَاتٍ فِيهَا مِسْبَاحٌ That is the parable of the light is a niche wherein there is a lamp. The lamp is in a glass. Says the glass as well, it is a, like a glittering star. Lit from the, uh, from the blessed olive tree. لا شرقية ولا غربية It's neither eastern nor western And then says whose oil almost lights up Though fire should not touch it And then says نو, Says يضرب الله الأمثال للناس Says لو, لا, لو لم تمسسه نار نور على نور يهدي الله لنوره من يشاء it is light upon light and Allah guides to his light whomsoever he wishes. And Allah draws the parables for mankind and Allah has knowledge of all things. So over here it's such a beautiful ayah. It says that this nur of guidance, it is uh, from Allah wa ta'ala. Now where do you find that nur of guidance? It says it is a nurun ilahiyun. In one of the riwayat that we have, uh, and Rasulullah he says that فَهَذَا النُورَ الْإِلَٰهِ مَوْجُودٌ دَائِمًا فِي بُيُوتِ الْأَنْبِيَاءِ In one of the meetings Rasulullah was says that you would find this nur in the houses of the prophets فِي, نور ال... في بُيُوتِ الْأَنْبِيَاءِ وَالْأَوْسِيَاءِ and the successors of the prophets كما قال رسول الله الدار الم... uh, Now here says that Now in another report uh, when Rasulullah was reciting this ayah fi buyutin adhin Allah an turfa'a that is in the houses where Allah has exalted them has permitted that they have to be exalted and raised faqama ilayhi rajulun someone in that meeting he stood up and he says that fi buyuti hadhihi ya Rasulullah qala buyutul anbiya he said that in these houses, Rasulullah says, it is the houses of the prophets. فَقَامَ إِلَيْهِ Abu Bakr. Abu Bakr, the first Khalifa, was present in the meeting. He says, Ya Rasulullah, هَذَا الْبَيْتِ uh, Does the, these houses of the prophets, do they include the house of Ali and Fatima? قَالَ النَّعَمْ مِنْ أَفْذَلِهَا مِنْ أَفْذَلِهَا Says, yes. And the best of the houses of the prophets, it's the house of Ali and Fatima. So for fi buyutin adin Allah. So keep that in mind 
that the ayah Nur from, uh, from Surah Nur, ayah number 35, Allahu Nuru Samawati Wal Ard. Allah, He sets that parable of that uh, He is the light of the skies and the earth. And this guidance is from Allah, the Baraka wa Ta'ala. He guides whosoever He wants and He wishes. And these houses wherein this light is seen are the houses that Allah has exalted them. And then in uh, Rasulullah he says it is the house uh, of uh, the prophets and Ali and Fatima are the best of those um, that can be mentioned over here. وَقَدْ نَبَّأَنَ الْلَطِيفُ الْخَبِيرُ أَنَّهُمَا لَنْ يَفْتَرِقَ حَتَّى يَرِضَ عَلَيَّ الْحَوْ And also Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala has said that the Qur'an and the Ahlul Bayt, the two of them, they will be with the Prophet they will not separate from one another until they arrive at the pond on the day of judgment by Rasulullah. Now, لَوْ بَقِيَتِ الْأَرْضِ بِغَيْرِ إِمَامٍ لَسَاحَتْ You must have heard this hadith as well, that if this earth remains without an imam, this entire earth will devastate, will be destroyed, it will cease from existence. So the presence of an imam is mandatory. His wujud is wajib. So without an imam, this creation also will not remain, will not sustain. So remaining of this creation and sustaining of this earth, it all depends on the imam. So if when it is dependent on the imam, means the guidance is his. If the guidance is his, he is the summoner, he is the caller. And that is why we say, As-salamu alaykum, ya da'i Allah. Now, Imam al-Asr alayhi salatu wasalam, when Allah has appointed him and chosen him, chose him for this task of summoning, so everything that he needs has to be provided by the Almighty. In a hadith says that, يُغْنِ اللَّهُ كُلًّا مِنْ سَعَاتِهِ وَكَانَ اللَّهُ وَاسِعًا حَكِيمًا That Allah wa ta'ala will give whatever is required and needed uh, to the Imam and Allah He is uh, the one who gives wasi'an uh, uh, and He gives a lot. Wasi'an hakima He is the wise and the um, who gives a lot. So these are some of the ayat that were mentioned for this As-salamu alayk ya da'i Allah wa rabbaniya ayatih now the second part of this beautiful ziyarat where it says that وَرَبَّانِيَّ آيَاتِهِ رَبَّانِيَّ آيَاتِهِ Someone who, who is aware of the signs of Allah or someone who uh, teaches you the signs of Allah wa who, uh, Someone who educates you the signs of the Almighty. Now there are two these two beautiful traits and attributes or two beautiful qualities of Imam have been mentioned in this first sentence. As-salamu alayk, ya da'i Allah, the summoner to Allah, wa rabbani ya ayatih, and someone who educates you, the si his signs, that, that is the signs of Allah, the wa ta'ala. So, rabbani ya ayatih, ayat, and the signs, of the Almighty Allah are all with the Imam. So these ayat include everything. Ayat of Quran, apart from the ayat of Quran, signs whatsoever Allah has created, everything is with the Imam alayhi salam. In the Dua Adila, when we say that biyumnihi ruzik al wara, that is, it is by the presence of the Imam alayhi salam, the sustenance and risk of everyone is given. Or in Quran, in, in I think in Surah Al Yasin, where he says that, uh, yeah, uh, where he says that uh, the uh, everything is uh, in, in, with, before, with the Imam alayhi salatu wasalam. So over here, this is that sign or the symbols that the Almighty has. They are all with the Imam. And whenever Imam asks for them or he needs more, Allah provides even that to the Imam alayhi salam. And God will reveal that sign to him and will answer the prayers of his guardian. The guardian is Imam al-Asr alayhi salam. So here we said that, وَرَبَّانِيَّ آيَاتِهِ 
Rabbani ayate in this statement, uh, which is the uh, being addressed to Imam al Asr alayhi salam in Quran, we've got this term used uh, a few times. Rabbani yun or Rabbi yun, they have been have both have been mentioned in Quran. Rabbani, it is the alim or the um, who has sincere, who has been educated by the Almighty or someone who possesses the knowledge of deen. Now these are of two kinds. Now there is an alim who is Rabbani, meaning that who uh, has learned rightfully and he practices rightfully. And then he practices, meaning Amr bil Ma'roof and Nahi an al Munkar. He invites people and also he forbids them from wrong. So this is one category. The second category of of people who are Rabbani or who have been educated or who are the learn who have learned. The, the second are those uh, who have learned. They've got the knowledge, but then they are disobedient and they don't stop people when they are committing wrong. They don't invite people when, uh, to the right. So although there is a category of ilm, but then practice doesn't exist over there. So Rabbani that has been mentioned over here uh, is those who invite people to the right path. They forbid people from doing wrong. And also they have been educated and have, they have learned. Now Quran talks about, says, Inna anzalna tawrata fiha hudan wa nur. Allah says we revealed, we sent down Tawrat. And in that Tawrat you will find there is guidance and there is nur. Yahkumu bihan nabiyyun. The prophets, they summoned you and they invited you and they ordered you towards that Tawrat. الَّذِينَ أَسْلَمُوا لِلَّذِينَ هَادُوا Now those who were obedient to the Prophet وَالرَّبَّانِيُّونَ وَالْأَحْبَارِ are the monks بِمَا بِمَا اسْتُحْفِذُوا مِنْ كِتَابِ اللَّهِ وَكَانُوا عَلَيْهِ شُهَدَى They practiced and they were a witness to what was revealed to them فَلَا تَخْشَوُ النَّاسَ وَاخْشَوْنِي وَلَا تَشْتَرُوا بِآيَاتِ ثَمَنًا قَلِيلًا وَمَنْ لَمْ يَحْكُمْ now there were people who did not abide by the teachings, who did not practice what was sent to them, and they did not, they did not order or command to what was revealed to them by the Almighty. kafirun. They are those who are the faithless, or they are those who are the kafirun. Now. Quran on two occasions says that those who were these Rabbani, that is who were knowledgeable, but they did not practice, they did not forbid people from doing wrong, they did not invite them from to doing right. So for them, uh, uh, they are the ones who have done the worst. So when you say that, As-salamu alayk, ya da'i Allah, the samana to Allah, wa rabbani ya ayate, that someone who has been appointed, who practices himself and who forbids people from doing wrong, who invites people to doing right. That is Imam al-Asr alayhi salatu was salam. Now, there are many more ayat in Quran that talk about this, uh, this issue. Now, um, the... Uh, when we talk about uh, the uh, the command or the education, Rabbani ayate, Imam, uh, he teaches, he educates, and then if he wants something to happen, he makes it happen. Now, to uh, to understand this in easy and simple words, uh, we've got this du'a where we say, Ya muqallib al qulub, that is someone who revives and someone who involves the heart. Well, uh, and then he brings them. Imam al Asr alayhi salatu was salam, when he wants something to happen, he is the one who, who transforms the hearts and he makes it happen. Now, for example, in this day and age, this uh, nasheed or this song that you've been hearing quite a lot, Salam Farmande, and then that is Salam to the Master. And you see hundreds of thousands of children. They are singing, they are chanting, they are calling the Imam in their beautiful uh, voices, in their, in their hymns, in, in the way how they are approaching. This is something 
not fabricated. It isn't anything that people have done it themselves. No, this is something which is being taken, which is being, uh, which is forming from behind the scenes. Unless the Imam has such an intent, you would never see anything such beautiful of such magnitude globally. Now, the reason why this is being mentioned over here is, uh, inshallah, we are heading closer and closer to the return of the Imam. And what we see in the Arba'een walk and millions of people clustering around Abba Abdullah al Hussein, all moving towards one direction. And then you see that such a beautiful congregation of that many Shias that gather in one part of the earth. And then also the riwayat, they say that Imam al-Asr alayhi salam, when he returns, Masjid Kufa is going to be his headquarter. And then riwayat say that Masjid al-Kufa is going to be the largest mosque on earth. And then furthermore, riwayat say that when you want to enter into Masjid Kufa from one door, the other door is going to be miles apart. So do you need such a big mosque? Now understanding all of these riwayat was very tedious and difficult. But then if you remember three, four years ago, just before Corona, there was a Juma that was held and that was in the Arba'een walk. So Imam Juma, he was leading the prayers in Najaf and we were in that march and we about 50 kilometers away from Najaf and then Jama'at was all connected all the way to the Imam who was in Najaf. So that is that became possible for us to understand that when Imam will be ruling and Masjid al Kufa will be the largest mosque and the doors of that mosque will be miles apart, such a big, big mosque because people they will cluster around the Imam, they want to be around the Imam, close to the Imam in Masjid Kufa. Now keep this in mind and then Rivayat they say, Ashabul Mahdi, the companions and the soldiers, the helpers of Imam Mahdi alayhi salam will be the youth, will be the young. Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi salam says, Ashab al-Mahdi shababun. They are the youth, they are the young. La kuhulan fihim. You won't find any old in them. Illa misli kuhl al-ayn wal milh fizzad. Says the uh, if you do find old men in them, old people, old uh, ashab in them, it's going to be like the little kohul that you apply in your eyes. A little eyeliner, a small, uh, to make the eye look pretty. You don't put a lot of, uh, although nowadays they just brush out the eye with a black mark patch and then they say, this is the eyeliner I have. So in the olden days, when beauty was something else, kohul was that little eyeliner that was applied to the eye to make it look pretty. Or when you want to add salt to your food, it's just a pinch of salt that is added to make the food taste good. Imam says, the ashab and the companions of Imam Mahdi, they are the youth. And the old in them will be like a pinch of salt in food or like that kohol, the eyeliner that you have in your eyes. So majority or the main chunk are going to be the youth. So when you see the magnitude of this Salam Farmande, hundreds of thousands of children chanting and calling, and many of them you see how they, are, they burst into tears when they are calling the Imam. So things become very closer to reality that we are moving towards a direction. Now, why did this happen? How did this happen? That is behind the scenes. If Imam wants something to happen, he will make it happen. In all of these, uh, for example, uh, when the Marja'iyat was offered to some of the Maraj, like Ayatollah al Uzma Bahauddini, uh, they said, We want you to be the Marja. All of the, the students in Qom, the ulama, they went to him. In response, he says that if this is what Imam wants to happen, he will make it happen. Otherwise, by the looks of it, I do not have any of those uh, criteria or uh, the abilities that, uh, that are required for that marja'iyat. So that is what Imam, when he wants to happen, he makes it happen. That look, uh, when we look into some of these things that are happening nowadays, 
and how rapidly the changes are taking place definitely inshallah there is something uh, in making behind the scenes and inshallah Allah tabarak wa ta'ala make it in the form of the return of the Imam alayhi salatu was salam and count us all among the best of his servants and those who seek shahadat in his service Ya Allah in this day and age which is the day the era of deviation where everything uh, is at its max Allah protect us all protect our children protect our deen protect our iman and keep us all firm on his path inshallah Allahumma arinit talat al-rashida wal ghurrat al-hamida wakhal nadhiri bin nadratin minni ilayh wa ajjil farajahu wa sahil makhraja wa subhana rabbika rabbil izzati amma yasifun wa salamun ala al-mursaleen wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen Allahumma salla ala muhammad wa ala muhammad wa ajjil farajahu